All right, let's see what the damage is today. Can't be right. The shoes, gotta take the shoes. All right, shoes add like five pounds. Sweatshirt, definitely the sweatshirt. Light as a feather, baby, light as a feather. All right, there is something seriously jacked up about that scale. I don't know what it is. The pants? Yeah, the, the pants. It was the shorts. It was the shorts. Ha! Ah! Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we're going to dive into how you can possibly gain weight while following an alternate day fasting protocol or really any intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating protocol in general. We're gonna talk about the underlying causes and what you can do to mitigate against these undesirable outcomes, okay? But first and foremost, I wanna start out with my obligatory weight disclaimer, a PSA, if you will. I know that a lot of us get tied up and somewhat hypnotized by the numbers on the scale, especially when they are going in our direction. It's mesmerizing, it's exciting, it's enchanting. I don't know about a chanting, but it's cool. But this is easily obsessive and turns into somewhat of an evil spell. Before I dive into anything, I want you to remember that the scale is just a tool to identify a trend. It explains nothing whatsoever when it comes to metabolic changes that are happening on the inside. Things such as improved glucose tolerance, changes in insulin sensitivity, different blood biomarkers, and Gene expression. I could go on and on and on about how little it really tells you. But I won't, but I could. I'm not, but I could. Remember that. I mean, in my six month ADF rendezvous that I just completed about a month or two ago, I saw about a 10 pound daily fluctuation in weight. And that's just from food and water. 10 pounds, just like that. The scale gives you a number and zero context. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, I might have to do a video about why scales are posers. Because I'm getting a little jacked up right now. Let's call it the weight video that you never knew you needed. Keep on the lookout. Anyhow, despite all that, let's talk about the different factors that might be influencing your weekly weight trajectory while following a intermittent fasting or time-restricted feeding protocol. And we got four we're gonna look at today and a few tidbits and gems thrown in the mix, as always. So number one, stress levels. And chill out, I'm gonna tell you why. Over the last few weeks, you may be feeling a little extra weight on those shoulders in the form of cortisol, or one of the most prevalent stress hormones that circulates throughout our body. I don't know, there may be some nationwide, countrywide lockdown, or your boss just being an asshole. Little things that I like to call micro stresses have the power to build up and compound and become one of your biggest enemies to modern day health. This is otherwise known as low dose chronic stress. Chronic meaning continuous, never ending, like the Kids Bop series of CDs, currently at Kids Bop 473. Gotta say though, it's a banger. This low dose chronic stress on its own sets the stage for a number of detrimental metabolic conditions that could do some major damage over time. 
We explore all this in this video right here. As for how this pertains to fasting and weight, well, the overabundance of stress hormones circulating throughout our body promotes the storage of excess energy as fat. And not just any type of fat, the worst type of fat, visceral fat, that fat that builds up and lines your organs, hardening and increasing our likelihood of metabolic syndrome and metabolic disease across the board. So little micro stresses such as overworking, dealing with bad toxic relationships, social media overuse, I don't know who does that, all add up and help this low dose chronic stress compound and likely work against your health goals. Oh yeah, and it can make you crave sugary processed junk. Speaking of junk, number two, overnourishment, overeating, stuffing your face, eating way too much. I think you get the point. And this one really comes down to two categories. It could be straight overnourishment or eating a little too much of shitty food. You are following a fasting protocol. That means you are hyper-focused on the when you eat, most likely thinking that that can offset the what you eat to a greater extent than it probably really can. And I bet you ask, how do I know this? Well, it kind of happened to me. Fasting, especially some of the more extreme intermittent fasting and time-restricted feeding protocols will in fact move the health needle in the direction you want it especially in the beginning when it's new and your body's trying to make sense of this new energy consumption model. But if you remember from our eating for longevity talk, pulling only one of the eating strategy levers may not give you the full outcome that you're looking for. The what and how much also have a say in this game. Overnourishment is overnourishment. Eating a full jar of homemade, raw, organic almond butter with freshly baked organic fries from three oversized Japanese sweet potatoes, maybe a little overboard. Delicious and worth it, but not something you should probably do every feeding window. Some you learn the hard way. So you've already done a great job locking down the when, now just pay some attention and fine tune the what and how much. It's something that I'm currently doing after making the exploratory switch from ADF to OMAD and seeing how my body reacts. Continuous realignment is the key here and it takes some testing. So don't be discouraged by a week of bad results. And if you're weighing bad results by the numbers on the scale, you need to change that anyway. But let's stay with this realignment thing with the next reason why you might be putting on some pounds while following a fasting protocol. Number three, we got circadian misalignment. And here's my PSA to you. Why spend big bucks on a Rolex when we all come fully equipped with a high-tech fancy clock of our own? One that's evolved and self-optimized over the last 100,000 years or so. You got it, our circadian clock. That internal body clock that regulates everything from cellular activity, microbe migrations, and yep, you guessed it, energy partitioning and utilization. Poor consistency with sleep and wake timing can really drive some negative effects when it comes to how we store and use energy. Studies have shown that a single night of poor sleep in quality and duration alters our metabolic efficiency for the following day, making us less glucose tolerant, inhibiting our ability to store energy, glucose in the muscle, and adding the additional insults of prioritizing muscle breakdown for energy over fat stores. Come on, man. Can you see the problem? Keeping up on your sleep and not becoming some sort of nocturnal creature can and will help mitigate adding on those extra pounds while following a fasting protocol. It may be a little weird hitting the hay earlier and waking up to catch that early worm, but you'll get used to it. Speaking of getting used to it, number four, our body's natural adaptation. And we talked about this a little bit in other videos, but we bring it back because this is a reason you might be gaining some extra pounds or your progress may be slowing a little bit after having a fasting protocol implemented for a little bit. We are master adapters. This is a fact. 
unfortunately, most of us haven't gained shape-shifting powers just yet, but I think it's on the roadmap. We wouldn't have made it this far as a species, as a civilization, as a society, if we weren't. But with all these benefits come little thorns that, you know, poke us in the side every once in a while. What type? Well, like doing a super awesome job at being efficient and leading us to a head-on collision with a plateau. That's my, okay, TikTok dance time. No, okay. A plateau is essentially our body responding to a certain protocol or intervention in a different way than it initially responded. The facts simply are that we are not in the same metabolic state as we were three months ago or six months ago whenever we started the protocol. Over that span of time, there has been a lot that probably changed from a biological standpoint within our bodies. For example, with an intermittent fasting protocol, the body, like I said before, metabolically adapts. It becomes more efficient. Mitochondria become stronger and more efficient. Our metabolic rate typically decreases along with our body composition or our body size. So if we're losing weight, we're essentially gonna burn or need to burn less energy over the course of the day. And you can see how that could be a problem if we continue eating the same amount, yet we need less energy to operate. It's math. Hormone levels change, fat adaption occurs, and much, much more. And with all this change, many of it good change, it becomes harder and harder to get the same results while putting in the same amount of effort. We go in depth in all of this in this video right up here. Link everything below too. But that's another reason why you might be packing on some pounds. Body adaptation, plateau, and right now we're gonna go to what you can do to combat these four roadblocks. Yeah, roadblocks. That may be stunting your, stunt your step, stunting your walk, stunting away, stunting your progress. There you go. All right, so let's go through what you can do. First off, with stress. Build a stress management routine. It is one of the most valuable tools that we can have as we venture through this world of ever going chaos. Things such as exercise, mindfulness, or meditation, breathing practices, and doing nice things for others. This one actually has some ridiculously cool science to back it, as well as eating well and sleeping well consistently. Try adding a few of these into your routine, little by little, day by day, week by week. Remember, we're playing the long game. Next, the what and how much you eat. Now I get it. I get it. One of the pros of implementing a fasting protocol is having the leisure of not being so strict on the what you eat and the how much. And that may be the case. And hopefully that is the case. But down the line, it could be somewhat problematic. I know. So here's what I'll say. Focus on eating real whole foods, jam packed with fiber and chew. Give yourself a little time, about 20 minutes or so, to let the satiety signal get to that mushy membrane up here. Full disclosure, I'm working on this one too. Japanese sweet potato fries, can't live with them, can't live without them. Now, as for circadian rhythms, you might be surprised to know that sleep is literally the foundation of all things health. With it, it can accelerate healing. And without it, it could do the opposite, and probably will. So try to stay consistent with sleep and wake times, even on the weekends, especially on the weekends. Other things that can get you in alignment is getting some sun within 30 minutes of waking up. This will send the signal throughout your body that it's time to get going. And you should also look into your sleep routine. Remove that late night blue light, AKA cell phones, computers, TVs, which all help trick your body that it's daytime when it's actually 11 p.m. at night. It delays the secretion of melatonin, setting you up for a shitty, tired, metabolically inefficient tomorrow. Invest here, get your Z's. And lastly, what to do for that plateau thing. Yeah, we all experience it at some point or another. After doing anything for an extended period of time, it's just bound to happen. There's only so much weight you can lose, only so much muscle you can gain, knowledge that you can retain. What I found works best for me is switching it up. Keep the body guessing to some extent. 
In weight training, this could be doing something such as progressive overload or adding complexity to the movement, activating more neural circuits. In fasting, it's something like modifying a feeding window, throwing in a prolong or a fasting day here and there, and altering the what and how much you chow down on. It's the reason I recently made the switch from ADF to OMAD. Don't be afraid to push and explore the new boundaries. Take a chance, make a mistake, get a little messy. The key through all this is to keep at it. Understand that we are all on this continuous journey of finding balance. Take your time and make strategic decisions with the big picture in mind. And understand that you're gonna have to tweak things to optimize and make them work for you. Cause that's what matters. Not the greater population. They're okay, but you. And throughout all this, the scale is a tool, an unnecessary tool if it's gonna add additional unwarranted stress into your life. So if that's the case, don't use it. There's many other ways to measure and monitor progress. Remember, you got this. Now I gotta go uh, take care of this situation. It's, it's gotta be the hair, right? Gotta be, gotta, I mean, 